Hello friends, this is Otz, and today we're starting a new self-explanatory series called Underrated Perks. We're going to be looking at perks that are not widely regarded as very useful or very strong, and we're going to try to figure out exactly how to use them to their full effect and to see whether or not they have any redeeming qualities. Our first episode will cover the perk Agitation. Agitation is a trap teachable, it is the last trap teachable that you'll get, and while most people don't consider this perk to be outright bad, most of them don't see the use of it. They don't see it justifying a perk slot. What does agitation do? Let's have a look at it. Agitation makes it so that you move people faster when you're carrying them towards a hook. It increases your speed by 6, by 12, and by 18%, uh, respectively, with each uh, rank of the perk. And it also increases your terror radius, which is a neat little effect that seems a bit gimmicky. Now, most people don't mind being a little bit faster when they carry someone to a hook. That's, a, that's an amazing thing. But how much time are you going to be spending carrying people to hooks? Is it really that critical? Most people think it is not. And I can't really blame them. It is a tiny percentage of the time you're going to be spending in the game. So how does this perk uh, really justify that perk slot? There's one thing we need to know before we get into it. One thing that is really important to understand and that's that when killers pick a survivor and they move, they all have the same standard movement speed, which I think is close to 92%, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, it's something it's something close to that, if I'm... Could that be right? No, I think, it's, I think it might be a little bit lower. But the thing that you should know is that you are slower than a survivor sprinting. When you carry someone, if a survivor is in front of you and they run away, you will never catch them. And you cannot lunge either. So you will never be able to hit someone who is running away from you. Agitation at level 3 changes this. That little boost of speed makes you actually faster than survivors. Not a lot faster like you usually are when you move normally for standard killers, but it makes you fast enough to be able to catch to a survivor. This is a bit game-changing, as you will now be able to do things that normally would be completely out of the picture. Let's see some examples. You can see that a survivor that is running away from me cannot really get away from me for too long. And if I commit to it, I can eventually get to them. I get a head in. This is pretty damn important. Agitation making you move faster also extends the range from which you can uh, hook people. This has a lot of implications. Let's think about them. Uh, maybe getting into a basement that would otherwise be unreachable now becomes a possibility. Maybe getting to a hook that would be too far away but that it's really advantageous is now uh, a possibility thanks to you being able to do it faster. People trying to uh, take hits to protect their teammate will not have as much of an impact because you'll still be able to cover the distance quicker. Agitation does not seem that useful overall, but when you realize how much is at stake when you need that perfect hook, agitation can absolutely be a game changer. This is why this perk can be decent. Uh, that being said, what does this perk wo wo uh, work well with? Which killer does it pair well with? Let's think about it. First of all, the first killers that will benefit from agitation are the killers who have incredible abilities to down survivors quickly and who want to minimize this downtime uh, between chases. We're talking about nurse, we're talking about hillbilly and the like. If you see a nurse with agitation, that is a nurse who is extremely, extremely confident in her ability to down you really quickly and wants, you put, uh, and wants to put you on a hook very, very quickly so she can move on to the next person. Same with the hillbilly. But these are not the killers that benefit the most from agitation. Killers who benefit the most from agitation are the next ones. They are the ones that need to prepare around a certain area. We're talking about hag, we're talking about trapper. The trapper takes a long time to set out traps in one part of the area. And one of the worst things that you can do to him is take a hit and then go very far away from that area where all of his traps are prepared. If he downs you elsewhere, he cannot make it back. But with agitation, he might very well be able to make it back and put you exactly where he wants to be. Uh, the hack suffers from a similar problem. She is a little bit quicker with setup, but she's very susceptible to survivors stepping through all of her traps while she's carrying someone. She puts 10 traps in perfect spots, she picks up one survivor, takes them to anywhere, and in that meantime, a smart survivor will trigger all her traps and she will not be able to do anything about it. With agitation, this time is now cut a little bit shorter uh, and her ability to be back in the fight is um, maximized and the, the ability of the survivors to uh, cause damage to her traps is again reduced. 
Another kind of killer that can make really good use of agitation are the killers who have a deadly basement game. This includes basement, um, trapper and hag as well, but it also includes uh, the hunters, it includes the uh, cannibal, it includes hillbilly, arguably. Anybody who can really, really punish multiple survivors being in the basement will find good use for agitation because now suddenly you will be able to take people to the basement from further and further away and survivors will need to really wisen up and really avoid that center area or whatever the basement is located. Agitation also has a lot of synergy with other perks. Let's have a look. Any perk that has to do with hooking will find use with it. If you have barbecue and chili, you'll be able to get its effects a little bit quicker. If you have the new thrilling tremors, I'll find it over here, you will be able to see which generators are being worked on right now and start heading in that direction. You will be so fast with someone on your back that you'll be able to cover maybe half the distance to that generator and hook someone next to it. There is almost nothing stronger for a killer than being able to secure a hook next to a generator that's about to be completed. That lets you defend two things at once. Normally, you would have to choose between staying at a generator, kicking it, and making sure that nobody comes to touch it, or going to the person on the hook, making sure no one comes for the rescue. If you manage to have those two things at the same place, and you have a survivor or two running around, waiting, and not doing anything, that is a really strong position to be in. Thrilling tremors and agitation combo really, really well. If you want to be extra spicy, you can throw in another regression perk to the mix. And we call that one, Pop Goes the Weasel. It works like this. You down a person, you pick them up really quickly, you see which generators are, be are being worked on thanks to Thrilling Tremors. You walk to the closest generator that you can that is being worked on, that should be outlined in red. You hook someone nearby and then you use Pop Goes the Weasel on that generator. Bam! You have now regressed it and you have a generator regressing that you can have a, a look at and someone on the hook that you can defend. Again, these are really, really interesting combinations and strong killers would make very, very good use of all these perks put together. Agitation can be uh, also... Uh, combined with other perks such as save the best for last. Save the best for last, some people don't realize, works when you're carrying someone. That means that if you're trying to get someone to the basement and someone comes for the body block or someone is caught in the open, you will be able to hit them and get stacks of save the best for last. You will be going very fast, you will be recovering very very quickly. Another gimmicky perk that you can run uh, on top of this is Mad Grid. We're gonna find it right over here. Mad Grid makes it so that every time you hit someone, the person on your back has their wiggle meter paused. Now, I don't recommend all these perks together. They're not gonna help you in most situations, uh, but I've tried it and it's a pretty fun combo. It is pretty fun. I think it's very weak because you're committing too many of your perks to one particular situation and people who are not playing in survive with friends, they, they will not take body hits, right? They'll just be spread out, not doing anything uh, coordinated. And people who are in survive with friends will eventually realize what you're doing and they will avoid it. <laughs> and that's, that's what my experience has shown me. But still, it is a fun combination being able to, you know, have someone on your back and then start chasing everyone. I've had a few games like that. It's been stupidly, stupidly fun. I can recommend it just for that fan factor alone. So yeah, Mad Grid makes it so that if you miss your hit while you're carrying someone, you don't have any cooldown. And if you do hit someone, the person on your back now gets a pause. So you, you're basically, like, anybody trying to to body block the hook will will get punished severely. <laughs> and it's, it's fun just for that reason alone. And of course, with Save the Best for Last, if you have the ability to get another hit on someone and gain more stacks while you're carrying someone, it's a win-win for you. Very, very strong perks. Uh, when you use them together, they can lead to some interesting moments. Alright, it seems like the lunch break for the construction workers is... ...is over. We'll be back in a minute. We'll, we'll, we'll be back in a minute. Alright, it seems like things have calmed down for just a little bit, so let's get back into it. Let me talk to you about Iron Grasp. Iron Grasp is a common perk that all killers have access to from the beginning, and he has a similar effect. It doesn't make you any faster, but it makes the recovery time longer for survivors. And it also reduces the wiggle effect that you experience when you're moving them. You might be tempted to use these two perks together. I don't recommend it. I think it's a little bit overkill. Because our agitation lets you get hits, uh, lets you get hits 
on unsuspecting survivors, I think it is the superior perk even though they both have a similar effect. So go for Agitation whatever you can. I wouldn't run both of these, they're, they're just not that useful together. And trust me, I've tried. <laughs> but that being said, if we do run Agitation, what is what are the best practices? When should you ever go for hits? There are two situations where you don't want to go for a hit. If you're going to lose the person on your back, that's usually not worth it, unless you are trading in the person on your back for someone else who is dead on hook and they're a high value target and you prefer to lose the person on your back just so you can down the next person that could be acceptable if you're going to lose stacks of save the best for last which is a completely different perk then obviously don't go for hits and if you think that the survivor who is trying to body block is baiting the adrenaline don't go for hits how, how does this work those are survivors who are usually on a team and they know because their teammates are telling them, hey, I'm about to pop the last 10, you're going to get adrenaline, which will heal you up. They'll take a hit, uh, they'll go away, they'll immediately get healed and spent off. If you, if you see that happening, don't even bother. In every other situation, it's worth going for a hit. But let me tell you, it's not that simple. Even though you are faster than survivors, you are not much faster than survivors. If you catch a survivor in the open, you will be able to hit them once and you'll probably have enough time to still get the hook. That's great. If they are at a pallet, you will not be able to go through the pallet because you cannot launch. If they are at a window, unless you're really close, they're going to go through the window and you won't be able to chase them through the window, obviously. If they're at a locker, they'll also be able to get into the locker and you won't be able to do anything. Don't bother in those situations. If they have dead heart, they will probably use it. So keep that in mind as well which might give them a little bit of distance. Obviously, you would never want to go for two hits. Even though survivors are slower than you, if you hit them once, they will recover, they will, you know, make up the distance with the little sprimbers that they get when they get hit. And you are not fast enough to catch to them a second time. That would be a mistake. Unless they really corner themselves in some way, you probably won't want to go for two hits. For that reason, agitation could be very strong on killers that usually keep survivors injured, uh, such as Legion or Plague. But you'll find that these survivors, they often don't go for body blocks because they're they know what they're out of the injured and they know that they can bait you. But give it a shot on these two; it might it might be useful. Uh, moving on, uh, another situation where you cannot use agitation is if a survivor is out of the at a loop where they can run you around, with a person wiggling on your back, making you move erratically, and with your very very slight faster distance and your bigger hitbox, you will not be able to catch a survivor looping you. Uh, think of playing Michael at tier 1. He is a little bit faster, but he's fatter than survivors. He just cannot chase normally. So, again, do get that hit, but only if they're in the open and if they, if you think that you've caught them in a bad spot. Do not try to chase normally. You will not have any success. I unfortunately have tried it and I've come to that realization. So, agitation will definitely get you hits, but there is a limit to how greedy you can get with this. And you can definitely make mistakes. So, use common sense. That is how agitation is used, in my opinion. It is a strong perk. Not the absolute strongest that you could be running, but being able to catch survivors off guard will make a difference. And hopefully, with all this information that I've provided, you will be able to use it to its uh, maximum uh, capacity. We will now be moving on to a game where I'll be using agitation and demonstrate how to use it. And we'll build uh, a complete build around it. And I'll show you what it's going to look like. Let's go. We're going to be playing Trapper, who is my favorite killer, and we'll be running Agitation with all the effects that we've explained. We'll be running Thrilling Tremors, as we explain when we pick someone up, we will be able to see which gens are being worked on, and we'll be able to get closer to them, and use Pop Goes the Weasel on whatever generator uh, there is to immediately regress it and be able to defend them. And on top of that, we'll be using Fire Up, which is a really bad mediocre perk as of right now but that actually has some interesting synergies with our other perks it's gonna make us the the more generators they do it's gonna make us faster at picking up people at breaking pallets and also breaking generators not to mention that it also makes us faster when we vault how does this uh, uh, help with the other things? We'll break generators with uh, with pop goes the weasel faster we'll pick up people with thrill and tremors quicker and yeah, it's it's just gonna it's just gonna tie the entire build up. We'll see how it works. We're gonna run into it. Uh, killer lobbies do take a while, unfortunately, but we'll hopefully get a game real soon. Let's see how it goes. 
All right, let's do our best. One of the biggest maps in the game, if not the biggest map in the game, so it's going to be a bit challenging. But we do have some perks that will help us uh, speed up this whole process, so hopefully I'll be on our side. I hate trapping here, but it's so obvious, but it's still strong. We're going to go and do it. I'm also going to come up here, check if the basement is here. It is not. And... Oh, you see this dual totem? I'm going to put a trap right here. Just in case he wants to do a dual totem. No will step right on it. Hopefully. Let's do it. Ooh. Somebody failed a skill check. Somebody's running the fucking far off. Okay. Let's go chase them. There's no telling how long it will take us to find our other friends. <laughs> Alright. This is good because he might just run into the... I'm pretty sure that if I break this, he'll run into it. Uh, he didn't even have to. Perfect. He'll run into that trap. Wonderful. If we had the basement, we would be off to an amazing start. Uh, we're not so fortunate, but we also know that someone's working on that gen. And we can come right here. Maybe even get a hit on her. I'm not, I'm not confident enough, but still. Now we have a man in the corner. Where the generator will be slowly regressing. And a, f a generator was finished, so we already do things slightly faster here and there. I think there's a trap nearby, but with this new feature or glitch, I can't see them when I'm close. It's really annoying. Let's go back. Oh, hello, Megan. How are you? Yeah, I know. Balance landing. Go for it. Wait. Wait, what? What did she do here? She messed up. She messed up really, really badly. Let's replace some of these traps real quick. Let's break this pallet as well. That is 4% faster, can you tell? Hell yeah, dude. Anyway, we'll keep her in this house and we'll, then we'll be able to defend that person on the hook. Ooh, this is good for us. I think we can get a hit on her. Remember, normally we would not be able to catch up to her at all. Somebody saw us put that trap down, which is unfortunate. But now they're in a really bad spot. I know where every single person is. That's another little side effect of traps with Trapper. If they get... Um, if they get disarmed, you get a lot of information on the way. We don't have any good traps going on, which saddens me greatly. But we might just be able to catch this cloud if we chase her well enough. Mm hmm. She ran into nothing. She's not looking behind her, so I don't think she's got that heart. She did have it. Just didn't use it right. Alright, let's go. We pick her up, and we look at which gens are being worked on. And this seems like the team is trying to pick itself up. No generators being worked on at all, which is great. Let's do it. We need to replace some of these, unfortunately. We can pick them up, uh, both of them up, just like that. Beautiful. We're going to put a trap right here. And another one right here, at an angle. They will, they will only see this uh, last second if they come by. Anyway, oh. Oh, well, that was lucky. I thought I would hit her while I fell down. That didn't happen for some reason. Maybe I just got too confident with my launch hitbox. That's okay. We're chasing her pretty far away, which is unfortunate. We really don't know which gens are being worked on, but... I can kind of estimate that whatever gen they're working on doesn't have much progress. Because they stopped somewhere halfway. Ooh, she messed up here. Let's pick up the strap and not let her live this. Oh! Wait, she didn't realize? We trapped that, so... I think she's down here. Yeah, you could have used that death heart to go through my trap. And then you would have extended your life a little bit longer. Anyway. Oh, I should have waited just a couple seconds. That's my bad. Thrilling Tremors has a pretty hefty cooldown. If only we had waited two seconds, we would have been able to use it fully. Anyway, I'm really going to commit to these traps. We've got two traps over here. One of them is very visible. The other one... Ooh, should we hide it? I'm gonna replace it right here. I really trust in this one. Somebody saw me put it down before, but I still trust it. Yeah, that was bad. We could have used that information and used Pop Goes the Weasel. We're gonna use this downtime to go pick up the strap that is in the middle of nowhere and then be back. We now have two stacks of uh, fire up. <laughs> Which means we, we do things almost 10% faster. That includes picking up, that includes breaking things, that includes bolting. And 10% bolting is, you know, that's, that's nothing to... That's nothing to scoff about, is that how you say it? Yeah, that's that's not insignificant, that's pretty right, that's pretty right, yeah, that's pretty nice. <laughs> I kind of talk today for some reason. Alright, let's see who's coming in. 
I'm gonna put a lot of pressure on them by just being around. Hmm. I could camp her to death, but I really want to give them a chance. Come on, get her, get her. Nice. Well done. Absolutely would have been the best uh, thing to do, though. Let's be honest. Oh my god, Megan. Please, why are you doing this to me? Megan, I'm so sorry. I'm... Use your dead heart and die with dignity. Oh, would you look at that? I'm gonna step this from a side so that I don't step on my own trap. I'm gonna down you. And I'll pick him up. By seeing this, we can see what generators are being worked on. Um, oh my god, what in the world? Well... Uh, I don't want to be that guy, but I think we've got this. Yeah, it's just an EO left. Okay. Sometimes it is a good idea to commit to all those traps, man. Nia? Are you okay? I couldn't even see her climb up. There you go. That's what I tried to do the first time around. Alright, Adam. Hold up. Hey, that's a... Uh, that's an unbreakable. Good. Good dead heart. I thought she would panic. Uh, the other girl hadn't recovered for some reason. You're not making it this time. Back to the atom. Very good. Unbreakable will save you. However, if your teammates are potatoes and they stop healing, then it will do nothing much for you. We know where he went. We should hear him injured. Somewhere. Did he outsmart us? I'm looking out for any scratch marks, anything at all that could... Okay, I think this girl just told me where he is. He was he was crawling in that direction. Yup, there they are. You did not have enough time to recover. He's gonna have to put that down. Sending me the mag over. I don't know why it happens, but I know it happens. And yeah, that that's why I run Deerstalker sometimes. Because, ooh, I could have definitely hit that. That's why I run Deerstalker. The people on the ground will not realize just how much information they give you. They'll often try to get closer to the teammate that they think will come for the save. And that alone can point you in a direction that you might have not suspected. Or that you suspected but never fully committed to. Like uh, like in this case. Oh yeah, that was a cute little game. <laughs> I can't say we use agitation much, but that one hit there and the ability to put people on the hook and even hit that person while we were carrying someone else was very, very handy. One thing that's very remarkable about the trapper is that once you set up a trap, that trap keeps working normally, perfectly. Even when you have someone on your shoulders, right? That doesn't happen for most other killers. Their powers are useless when they're carrying someone. Michael cannot stalk. Uh, the hack cannot teleport. Obviously, Billy cannot use his chance, so the nurse cannot teleport, and so on. Hello. Let's get you here. With agitation, you'll find that it's never an issue to find a hook most of the time. Uh, who was Chimtan? I think that was the Nia? We found the Nia next to the hook, I reckon. If I didn't know where the hatch was... And I was her, where would I go? Hmm. We could give her the hatch, but... Alright, we're, we're gonna do this. We'll give her 10 seconds to go find it, and if she doesn't, we'll trap one of the exit gates, close the hatch, then go for the other one. This is a really strong thing that the trapper can do. Uh, as of the endgame collapse, the... Um, as of that update, the hatch will spawn for the survivor, no matter how many... No matter how many generators are left. So, m more often than not, you're going to be finding yourself in a situation like this, where the last person is somewhere, maybe up, maybe down. And... Adrenaline? Nice. She picked herself up. And, ooh. I didn't notice this gate right here. So now I will trap this gate. And whatever she does, she's, she's in trouble. She cannot open the exit gates without disabling my traps. If she does disable them, she gives me a head start to go catch her. Those 20 seconds would be not that long. Like, if she was on that one, she could have opened it by now, but yeah, she decided to heal, which is, you know, good for her, but I think that was the wrong call. Not, not that there's much she can do, mind you. If we decide to be a bit of a dickhead, she's gonna die. We can wait right here in the middle, and there's nothing she can do, pretty much. But yeah, what was I talking about? Yeah, the trapper, while you're carrying somewhere, uh, your traps are still fully functional. You can get to someone, smack them, and they'll be down by the time they escape. As of the next update, they have finally fixed the quote-unquote glitch feature 
that made them stay trapped if they were struggling. So now when you hit someone in a trap, they will immediately break free of the trap, as opposed to stay there until they escape and then go down, which was always a bit weird. It was a bit weird, but it also played into the trapper's strength of immobilizing people, right? So if a survivor stepped on a trap, and I was busy carrying someone and I hit him, they would stay on the trap for a little while, so I would go away, and they wouldn't have a lot of time. Uh, they, would, they would need to struggle and then resist, which, which kind of sucks, right? Uh, whereas now when you hit them, they will immediately break down and they'll be able to use unbreakable. They'll be able to recover Come on Nia go go for it. Yeah, you can have it uh, So yeah, they, they are patching yet another feature that will unfortunately hurt the trapper. It's a little sad, but I Just wish they would patch some other things that hurt him All right, Nia Go on <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that was a good game well played. I think she was the only one that didn't step on a trap near the end. <laughs> she deserves it. Well, hopefully this game made you gain some appreciation for the perk Agitation. It is the absolute best you perk you can run? No, definitely. Definitely not. But, if you get it in your blood web, it is not an absolute waste and in some killers it can make sense. I will be back tomorrow with another video, perhaps another underrated perk if you guys so desire. If there is any perk that you think is underrated for both killer and survivor that you would like me to cover, there is a good chance that I'll look into it. If you leave a comment down below telling me about it, tell me about your experiences, tell me how to use it properly, tell me why I think people is bad and why you have made it work. <laughs> good lad. But yeah, that's gonna be all. I'll see what this man has to say. And we'll be off. <laughs> what a kill, dude. He got more points than me, almost. Yeah, he's got more points than me. <sighs> oh. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry, this is a sentimental... A sentimental moment. I'm going to enjoy it a little bit. <laughs> but yeah, whatever. Whatever he will say from now on, it's between me and him. I'll be seeing you tomorrow. Thank you so, so much for watching.